Yeah, it's Friday night, which means it's time for another episode of the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast. I'm Ashley. And I'm Casey. Last time, we looked at the most ambitious crossover event of all time, the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. We had a great time discussing this very bizarre piece of Nick media, and hopefully we'll get to the other two soon. We also put out our weekly Twitter poll asking which Nick Elodian crossover you would most want to see. Between Spongebob and Rocket Power, with only 15%, Angry Beaver's Cat Dog, with only 17%, you guys overwhelmingly selected Danny Phantom, Teenage Robot, 68% of you guys were very enticed by the teenage angst TV show here. Yeah, and I voted for Angry Beaver's Cat Dog personally because it might be too much. Maybe I'd watch a crossover movie, not like a crossover TV show. Uh, I love their rapport. SpongeBob Rocket Power has a lot of compelling reasons. I get why you guys picked Danny Phantom Teenage Robot, but I did not expect it to be so overwhelming. Shout out to Cam, at Cam Like Ham, who said... Two incredibly powerful teenagers with the powers necessary to save the world, but who are they going to take with them to prom? And it's Jenny and Danny photoshopped over Pearl and Spongebob from the episode where they go to prom. So props, Cam, I already tweeted this at you, but I did not anticipate the Spongebob element to this. Uh, You really took the concept and rode with it. I love it. Yeah, always thanks for the memes, Cam. Any day now, he's going to start billing us. We're just going to get him in the mail. But for now, the free memes are always, always gold. And it makes me think, too, and, you know, maybe maybe he also voted for the the teenage madness that it was. I don't know. I I personally went for SpongeBob Rocket Power just because I think it would be ridiculous. Like, I just think it would be high energy and it would be fun and madness. But I do think that thematically right danny phantom and teenage robot make sense together so there is that totally well this is probably the first time that you and i have had different answers and then the general public had a different answer as well you know what i mean yeah we're all across the board guys uh, yeah, casey and i both lost <laughs> <laughs> yeah right uh, and then cam also tweeted us a second photoshop which was tito's head on the hoff's body in the spongebob movie so that was wonderful as well uh great so moving on from crossover land unfortunately uh this week we're looking at the rugrats mother's day episode and it's a bit of a change of tone for the kind of content we usually come uh we usually deal with on here it'll be more on the emotional level of we're in between than fnn really this episode is very moving very uh historic in a way and ambitious so i'm really excited to dive into this one yeah they really cover a lot of topics here and we'll get into all of it and it's I'm excited to have this one on the show it's been a while since we've done a really serious episode with that being said be sure to follow us on twitter at fnn underscore podcast as well as facebook facebook.com slash fnn podcast and review us on itunes so that others can find the podcast fall in love with it all that jazz we've also got a youtube page And guys, a quick Nick News little segment here. For the shows that we cover, we don't usually have many news. Basically, it was Jungle Movie, Six Months of Nothing. Static Cling, Six Months of Nothing. But we've got news today uh, from a few weeks ago now. The SpongeBob musical was nominated for 11 Tony Awards, including Best Musical. In my opinion, very well deserved. It's a pretty weak season here in New York this year, and the SpongeBob musical is crafted with a whole lot of love. Ashley and I are going to go see it when she's in town. Uh, so congratulations to everyone who's involved with that and when it tours or if you're ever in New York City go check it out you will love it if you love Nicktoons yeah I gotta give props to Spongebob you know winning or not winning things but at least you know getting its name out there so I'm hoping that when I make my way out to New York New York next we'll be able to get it together so all that being said thanks so much for tuning in now let's get started All right, 
right, so as we mentioned, this is an episode from Rograts called Mother's Day. It's a Mother's Day special, actually. It came out on May 6, 1997, and it is from Season 4, Episode 2. And in this one, the Rugrats babies discuss Mother's Day, and Chucky wonders about his own mother. Yeah, and the tone of this episode is all over the place in a great way. It kind of hits every Rugrats note, right? Because for the first, like, two-thirds of it, it's pretty light-hearted and funny, aside for a moment or two. Yeah, it's... it is... It's a lot. It's a, it's such a good episode. It really is. It's the first really solid um, moment we see of them addressing Chucky's mom, right? It's mentioned in passing, I think, but it's not really addressed up until uh, this episode here. So, you know, but it starts out really, really lighthearted. We start out with the kids all seeing Angelica making this macaroni art and i love that they all think that she's like actually a solid artist she's like look at me this is art everyone knows pasta is used for art and it's you know it's your typical kid macaroni art sculpture and so you know it's it is what it is (laughs) but the the babies are all pretty impressed by it and i love that each time uh each time we see the macaroni piece we get this sort of uh montage type feel and we've got that Strauss uh the blue Danube the da 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 dum bum 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 and it's like this beautiful art piece and then it zooms out and it's you know Angelica's macaroni piece in the in the pickles living room yeah and it's you know it's <laughs> it just it is what it is and she has to go on explaining what Mother's Day is and all of that jazz to the rest of the group. Yeah, and while, while the babies aren't getting it, she goes, you babies are so dumb. I can't believe you lived to be one. <laughs> <laughs> just a, Angelica just has, she brought the heat in this episode. It's brutal. And Lil is like, well, what's Mother's Day for? She goes, well, in your case, it's to say you're sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On like why they get, why we give presents to our mothers. Just brutal <laughs> Angelica is with no regard for human life. <laughs> you know, she is just throwing them under, but they're, they're usually fairly unaware. You know, they, they usually don't quite pick up on to how yeah, cool it is. Yeah, they don't get it. They don't get it at all. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's solid. It's a solid way to start the episode because... Yeah. No Chucky yet. Right. That's important. We don't, we don't have Chucky in there yet, so everyone else is just looking for their, their Mother's Day gifts. It's funny, too, they decide that the best place to start looking for it is underneath the seat cushions and the couch. Tommy finds, like, this cookie, and he's like, do you think my mom would like this cookie? And Phil and Lil just <laughs> immediately eat it. Like... <laughs> and what an adorable concept that Tommy is like, I need to find a present for my mom, apparently. Guess I'll look in the couch, because where else is he gonna go? <laughs> Like, he's not just gonna go to the store. Amazon didn't exist yet, and a baby couldn't use it. Like, the only place he can think to find a present is in the couch cushions. Yeah, and they're kind of too young to make, like, actual art. They don't really have, like, supplies or anything, so, yep, that's... Right, yeah. I mean, and I think, too, it's kind of like, you know, they find, you know, pennies or whatever in the seat cushion, and to them, that's a pretty exciting gift. So, that must be a good place to find a gift to give. <laughs> Yep, yep. And so then Chucky arrives with Chaz, and Chaz is kind of like, okay, it's Mother's Day. He sort of gives a warning to the other parents, like, we're not going to talk about it. And Chucky immediately, you know, mingles with the babies. He gets dropped off, and the parents immediately neglect them, as they do. do. I do want to quickly point out, too, that Chaz has this box of things that were uh, his wife's. And he says, like, hey, can you put these in the closet? I'm just, I'm not ready to share them with Chucky yet. Uh, So he he does sort of acknowledge, again, not just that he doesn't, you know, it's almost really, I think if you dissect it, it's, it's a lot of him caring about himself. Like, he's not really ready to talk about her either, you know, because it's fresh for him, too. 
It is, and yeah, because Chucky's only two at the oldest. Like, this had to have happened recently, and to my knowledge, we never get a ton more details about her, but, or the specifics. Like, I guess we can assume something like cancer, because Chaz mentions a hospital, uh, and she's young and seemingly healthy in all of the flashbacks, so, um, I don't know. I don't know, but... It's, it doesn't really matter, ultimately, because Chucky didn't really experience that. It's more about the growing up without a mother, I think, and Ch Chucky learning how to deal with that. Uh, you can just tell that it's going to be a heavy episode, even though there's some great humor in it, and it's a, there's a lot of cuteness, you know? So the baby is basically... Well, first, they're explaining their newfound knowledge about Mother's Day to Chucky, right? Angelica has educated them. They're so excited to share with Chucky. It's Mother's Day, and oh, that's right, you don't have a mommy, do ya? Chucky says, nope. And Tommy says, how come? And he says, I don't know, I just don't gots one. And it's not in a sad tone. It's not devastated. He just, it's a fact. He doesn't know. You know, it's, it's, but it's really heartbreaking. You know, it kind of reminds me, and less seriously so, but um, I grew up with only two grandparents, one on each side, because they both passed when I was, like, one year old, and it was kind of the same thing. Like, I didn't realize that people should have four grandparents, mm. so, like, I remember that, like, came up in conversation that somebody was like, well, and then my other grandma, and I was like, what do you mean you're other grandma you have more than oh, one of those that's like, so interesting yeah. so i kind of felt similar to that right where he's like i don't i guess i just don't have one of those and i was like i guess wow i guess other people have four grandparents right because you I, don't really when you're a little kid you're, you're not really processing who, which grandparents are which of your parents parents you're right. just like oh that's the old person we go and see sometimes exactly you know? and it just didn't click to me that what the actual tree was, right? The family tree. Right. So, so I think it's kind of a similar wow. situation here with Chucky, right? He He's like, well, other people have moms. I guess I don't have one of those. And uh, there it is. But it's not, yeah. you know, it's, and it's, it is kid logic. I think that's just kind of how it, it works. So like I said, obviously yeah. very different, but uh, similar, similar notion here. And I, they always do such a good job of grasping that kid logic without making them just yeah. dumb right they don't just make them yes like well we're idiots which like they do have their moments but i feel like it it really is how you think as a kid you know and we and see a lot of that on here your side it's never like look at how dumb these kids are sometimes it's like they don't get it yet and that's humorous but it's such good writing it's so simple and it shows his point of view it could have, he could have monologued, it could have been like, uh, it could have been tearful, why don't I have a mommy, but it's just, I don't know, I don't got some, because his life is fine, to his knowledge, his dad is enough, he's like, oh, how else would it be? Um, so, they continue to look for presents for their moms, while simultaneously helping Chucky find a mom. But there's this great moment when Phil and Lil are in the backyard. They've moved to the backyard looking for presents because the couch was a lost cause. Phil finds a worm, and he goes, Hey, Lillian, should we get her a worm this year? And Lillian says, We got her a worm for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Of course excellent. they did. <laughs> or I think I got it backwards. I think Phil says, We got her a worm for Christmas. But still, it's, it's so good it's you know they they come up with all sorts of yeah things that are just sitting around there yeah um, and we also have a breastfeeding scene which i yeah. think deserves some unpacking this is fascinating so i mean again we're, we're sort of working with babies that are communicating in ways that they technically can't right so they do have they have memories of things that they're going to lose as they grow up and they're all talking about the first time that they met their mommies and, and it's so precious. And they they go and they're like, you know, when mom used to feed us the old way and like, I don't remember exactly what happened. And then that was our first laugh we shared together. And it was this really sweet moment. But like, you know, obviously not super graphic, but it's definitely yeah, breastfeeding, it. right? And there's nothing inappropriate about it, of course. But like, it certainly is shocking to see like, oh, wow, there, there's that. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I wasn't expecting it in a kid's show. It's it's another one of those moments where it's just one of those things that, as a kid, I... Because I'm pretty sure I've seen this episode. I definitely didn't mm -hmm. get it, right? Like, right. it's it's subtle yeah. enough that it's tasteful and it 
you know, it, it is a moment that they would remember, but I think it's an interesting choice to put it in there. Like, I'm, I feel like that would turn quite a few heads nowadays if it was in a, in a kid's show. Totally. And just the idea of the babies remembering themselves being born is such a cool idea. I remember when both of my brothers were born having a sort of thought of like, I'll bet they remember so much more than I do about those first couple weeks and months. Because for us, it's a total mystery. Like, I don't know, my first memory is probably when I'm like three or four at this point. Right. But for these babies, of course, they still have a vague remembering of it but they can't tell anyone about it yeah and and we also uh we see tommy's and he's like i was in this fish tank and i was scared and he's in uh he's in the icu right um some sort of intensive care and i don't know if it's ever really talked about but oh geez you're right i didn't think about that much more deeply yeah Um, so yeah that's upsetting which, you know, maybe part of me thinks that maybe that's part of why Dee Dee is so protective of him, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, that makes he, sense. she maybe feels. He's a preemie. Yeah. And, and she feels like he's more fragile than he really is. Which, you know, they, they still are very terrible, neglectful parents, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But she's certainly researching a lot on how to keep him safe. And I feel like that kind of reflects some of that character. And see, we, we get a lot of this interesting insight. And again, these things that are kind of clearly written not for kids to fully understand because that's another thing like I didn't really know what breastfeeding was I didn't really know what an ICU was I didn't know about any of these things so interesting stuff I I loved that scene it really stuck out to me yeah that is striking and but then we get to probably the best plot of this episode besides the end of course but Chucky looking for a mom. So Tom, this majestic, glorious 90s horn synthesizers come in. It's very sort of majestic and triumphant. And Tommy says, we're going to find you a mom, Chucky. And they put a plan in place. It really reminds me of the princess moment in Rugrats in Paris, where Chucky thinks that this princess on the ride is his mom and they have to find her. Um, which was also a key part of that music video, that ridiculous, funky, uh, what was it, Here Comes Chucky Chan? Yes, a classic, <laughs> classic of our time. But the, it's so funny how this show involves Spike, the dog, every once in a while. So first they're like, Spike is the first mom, right? Yeah, well, technically there's like a, there's a mannequin that comes very first, like a metal cage oh, yeah. mannequin. But that one's pretty oh, yeah. brief. Yeah. So and then they're like, "Well, maybe Spike can be your mom." Yeah, because they and... say they say um, the logic is, "Well, maybe a mom needs to be able to give kisses," <laughs> so they go on to Spike. <laughs> Who comes up with this? It's That's gold. so good. And there's this moment that I like. I wish I had as a reaction gif or something. But Chucky waving at Spike while Spike is itching his ear, and Chucky's going, "Hi, mom." <laughs> <laughs> And I, like out of the context of the show, it's so bizarre looking. Yeah, it's it's great though, and you know, the, he kind of quickly realizes that maybe maybe a mommy needs to be human too, right? Like maybe <laughs> this isn't gonna work. And their next decision is to go to Lil. Which... <laughs> oh, it was so. Funny. Oh God, of all the people to be a mother, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, it's time to burp the naughty baby. She's just kind of miming the things that she thinks moms do. Yeah, she also, uh, she found a bottle oh, under the fridge. And yeah. she's like, I licked all the ants off. And I, I honestly, like, almost gagged a little bit just, like, watching it. Like, we've Yeah, uh, we've been over this before, but Phil and Lil are, like, actually disgusting. They, they are... <laughs> horrifying i don't know how they don't get sick every five seconds i don't know i don't know how they are what they are but yeah Yeah. it's it's funny though it's a show about babies and i appreciate it more every year older i get it's i don't know what it is it captures this sort of like human quality of that's in every baby like there's this great moment when they're outside and they're like well maybe we can pick this flower for for uh uh for chucky's mommy and uh 
there's a bee on it, and Tommy goes, well, that bee is eating it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not what bees do. They don't eat flowers. But in their in minds. Fact, the opposite. <laughs> the opposite is happening, really. But yeah, of course, that's what it looks like. Yeah, and... God, they're... So, after Lil, the Ugh. next logical choice is someone older, right? Someone <laughs> older and still a, still a girl and still a human and... Angelica comes in and she's like, oh, I could be your mommy. You're just gonna have to make this sculpture for me. And she is, she is just textbook abusive parent here, just so self-absorbed. Oh, she totally is, yep. And Chucky, Tommy's like, I don't know if Angelica should be your mommy. And Chucky goes, Angelica is the bestest mom in the world. She told me so herself. Yeah. <laughs> And Tommy's just like, oh, okay, well, it must be true then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's such a ridiculous concept, and it's, <sighs> it's so and, sad. Oh, great moment with Chucky's name, too. Angelica decides, quote, Chucky's a stupid name. Blaine is a TV name. Everyone knows TV names are better. <laughs> Blaine. It, it, Blaine, out of nowhere, just everything, everything about everything she does. Again, she she makes him make her macaroni sculpture for her mom. She's making him get this yep. flower with a bee on it, and she specifically says she needs someone with a bee on it because yeah, yeah, who knows? She's the worst. And the, the other babies start calling him Blaine yes. too. And she was like, I need you to finish this macaroni sculpture. And he goes, I'm trying. She goes, I know, Blaine. And that's, well, you think she's going to say that's what counts. But she goes, that's what's so sad. (laughs) God, she really is ruthless in this episode. She is. It's such a quotable episode. It really is. And she is just, she is just all over the place. She's terrible. I... I do want to quickly backtrack here a little bit. It's not super important. There's a couple of side plots happening. We have Dee Dee and her mom are going to this spa to get, mm-hmm. like, mud masks or whatever. And then we have Stu is trying to make this, like, vacuum blender. He's basically trying to make, like, a robot mom, I think, is the concept. But it's just, like, this chore-doing thing, and that's a whole mess. Um, neither of those are particularly interesting plot points, but I felt like, you know, we should we should mention that they're happening. We do have a, yeah, a quick moment of a, parallel. A si- yes, absolutely. But we're sorry, real quick, first with the Dee Dee plot before we move on. There's kind of a sad moment where she's like, oh, I have to get my mom something. The last thing that that she liked was, what, like a troll costume in the school play or something? Yeah. She goes, and I hated that thing. It's like, oh, Dee Dee. <laughs> Yeah, and it is it is kind of sad, but we have this great moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward on this one to the end of this of her part of the plot. Yeah. Um. She Dee Dee turns to her after they go to the spa, and Dee Dee's mom doesn't really care for it. And Dee Dee's like, I just wanted to do something we'd both like. And her mom goes, You know what I like? And hugs her, and it says, This is what I like. And it's so sweet because she is often very critical. You know, she's the whole time she's like, we're spending so much money on stupid mud. And like, what's the point of this? And the idea that above all, she sort of reassures her that like she loves her, right? That her just being herself is what she likes. And I I thought it was really sweet. And the family. Like, because the house is a total mess at this point from a plot point that we'll get to. But she's kind of also gesturing around the house. It's like she loves the family. She loves spending time with them. So I thought that was a really nice moment. Yeah. And it's it is sweet. And again, we see Dee Dee trying so hard and sort of the idea of like, you know, it's the normal things that you do that that are really, really making the difference to her. But um. Yeah, I guess let's get to the mess, shall we? (laughs) Yeah, well, we have, you know, Stu is trying to make this invention that would be the perfect mom, right? He's trying to, like, teach it how to do tasks that he thinks are mom-related. It's kind of gendered and weird, but, uh, but he's trying to make this happen, and Betty is helping him with it. And there's some funny jokes there where Betty inputs all of the things that she thinks a mom has to do, and it says system overload, and she goes, you're telling me, buddy. <laughs> like, that was great. <laughs> yeah, because everything it takes to be a mom is just a, a whole lot of effort. So, 
But yeah, the invention goes haywire, and while Chucky is looking for the flower, the invention, like, starts, like, just charging at him, and Chucky's freaking out, you know, there's a bee chasing him one way, there's a, a invention coming at him from the other, he, he, the bee goes in his mouth, which is horrible, uh, and Chucky, what, crushes the flower on accident? Yeah, that happens? and, like, most of the petals fall off, I think it's a dandelion, mm-hmm. too, but doesn't really matter. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, and most of the, there's like one petal left. He goes to give it to Angelica and she says, this isn't a flower, it's a green stick with a thing on it. And yeah. he seems so sad, you know, he tried so hard and she's so unsatisfied and she yeah. decides to put them all in time out forever in the closet. Yeah, which is a great setup to the last sort of act of the the episode but then as earlier when chucky you know smashes the flower and the invention pretty much completely dies him and Stu both go oh great (laughs) one of your great moments you know between the parents and the kids those parallels yeah and I, i did like that they had a little bit of the parent plots and i did think they did a good job of keeping them minimal in this one sometimes totally you need a lot of back and forth between this one but this one's really a lot about the kids you know even though it's a mother's day episode it's really about the kids and their sort of perceptions of their moms that's bringing right. this episode through so yeah, yeah now i want to get into the what happens in the closet then the pep talk and yeah the like. yeah so they're they're in the closet and um they're like, well, you deserve a good mom. You don't just deserve Angelica. And they sort of start just talking about all of the things that make up a mom, right? They say, you know, they support everything that you do and they're there for you when you get hurt. And you just, just you know, generic things like that. And Chucky says, I sort of have a mom like that. My dad. And it's so oh. sweet, right? Like that he's... Kind of like, you know, I, I have somebody to be emotionally supportive and I don't necessarily have a separate person that is that, but I still have this person that's there for me all the time and I still appreciate him and it's it's so sweet. It is, and they are, all the babies are instantly on board like they are with everything. And notice how there's never deliberation. <laughs> They're never like, I don't know if that's right, Chucky, or I don't think you should do that. It's always, okay, sure. <laughs> yep, and they, they decide, you know what, let's get let's get your dad a, a Mother's Day gift, right? Because why not? And, and they... Tommy reaches into a box. He goes, this would make a good present and reveals a plunger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I think Phil and Lil actually end up giving to their mom, too. And she, oh, yeah, she thinks it's right. great. Um, and then they, of course, have to come upon the box, right? From the very beginning, Chaz's box. And there's this picture in it. And I guess, quick backtrack to when they were all talking about when they met their moms, Chucky's like, I don't know if I ever actually met my mom, but I have this dream a lot where I see this woman and we play in the backyard and we have so much fun and he finds a picture. And she loves gardening and she loves flowers. He knows that. And then he finds the picture and he's like, this is the woman from my dreams. Again, he doesn't quite piece together. And he still doesn't get it. Right. Like this, this is who your mom actually is, but he you know thinks like this would be a great gift for my dad and Aww. um it it is you know it's a really sweet moment really sweet thought and we have and they all find of... a diary too right but they can't read so and there yeah. are flower petals in the pages of the diary which is really tragic yeah i mean it's beautiful but like that she picked these flowers and put them in there specifically knowing that she was dying it's uh it's really heavy stuff and the babies, they don't get the full impact, but the adults certainly do, and that's revealed in the last scene of the right. episode. Right, because again, he, he just takes the picture for the time being, because that's, you know, that's what makes yeah. sense to him. The other kids, you know, Tommy gives the broken flower to his mom, and she loves it, and the twins give the plunger to their mom, and... Angelica gives the messed up macaroni art and blames the babies, but her mom still loves it because, you know, how mothers do. And then we finally get to Chucky handing Chaz the picture, and there's just this silence mm. across everyone. And it's like this knowing, it's chilling. 
<sighs> the music cuts out too. Yeah, and you just you really feel it. You really feel Chaz not knowing how to handle this moment, and I think Dee Dee's the one that ends up coming over, and yeah. he's like, "I'm not sure if I'm ready to share her with him yet." What if and, I'm just yeah, afraid he'll right. miss her? And she says, "Then you can miss her together." And it's it's so so sweet, so much of it. You and you feel his emotional struggle. And, and again, I do think yeah. part of it's kind of protecting himself. He's not really sure if he's ready to unload all of this yet, right? Right. Yeah, it's it's brutal, and it's I think the greatest moment for Dee Dee in the entire show. Uh, she's kind of she can be sort of flaky and ditzy and all these things, but. Telling Chaz that it's time to tell him in that line, then you can miss her together. How perfect is that? And at the same time, the the part that really broke my heart is Chucky wanders back over to the box and he wanders back over to the other babies and he goes, well, I guess my dad didn't like it. And he's so upset. He's like, I guess I did a bad job picking a present. And then Chucky or Chaz kind of kneels down and starts flipping through the diary and telling him about his mom and her legacy. And at the very end, he reads a poem that she wrote for him. Uh, and it was what the last entry in her diary. And the voice transitions from his to hers. We see her in the garden. And I don't remember the exact text, but the gist of it is, you know, I'm, I'm in the, you have a mom, I'm in the breeze, I'm in the flowers, I'm in the sunshine. And all the things that Chucky likes. And, oh, it's it's just perfect. It's truly perfect. If you didn't watch this episode, go look up at least that clip. Because it's just stunning. It really is. It's it's stunning. It gave me chills. I, it's so much. And the idea is, too, is you know that she's writing this knowing she doesn't have a lot of time left. And, again, this is where Chaz sort of says he start, she started this diary when she went to the hospital and he kind of hesitates there again. It's one of those things. I think it's intentionally a little bit vague, but we know that she's writing this poem knowing she'll never grow up with her son, right? That he's going to at some point miss having a mother and that the best thing she can do is write these words for him. And they're, they're so beautiful. They really are. Yeah, it's all handled so well, and basically the entire main cast is there in the room, which I think it it would seem inappropriate in another situation, but it felt great for this, because we we know Chaz, he's a, a timid, not always the most emotionally open man, and with his entire support system there in the room, he's able to... To really start, because it's not like everything is going to be good forever now about this. Chucky has to deal with that, and I wonder how much they get into it in All Grown Up, because I really don't remember. Probably not much, because that show missed a lot of good opportunities, but uh, if it does, that would be really interesting to see how they have a teenage Chucky handle growing up without a mom. Yeah, and and with a stepmom, too. I, I mean, maybe that's part of why it doesn't come up quite as often. True, yeah. But... Um, and such a great stepmom too. Yes, thank goodness, right? But it ends so well. It it really does. I agree with Casey. I think if nothing else, you should find a clip of that poem. I'm sure it's somewhere. It's beautiful. It plays out the thing, and we also see Chucky just sort of saying, "Guys, I do have a mommy after all. She's everywhere." And again, it's just oh. it's just the sweetest thing, and. Yes, he doesn't quite get the gravity of it yet, but I I think even as he gets older, he would appreciate sort of her sort of understanding of, you know, doing the best that she can for him as he's growing up. It's, it's so good. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? I, I feel like that's really, um, that moment is one, the big one. I have really two more things, I guess. One is that Angelica, when she's being a mommy, She's, like, on her phone all the time yelling at people. And just the child psychology of that is excellent. That her model of a mother is is Charlotte, you know, who's this high-powered executive. She's intense. She's, she gets stuff done. Uh, but Angelica, see, that's how Angelica experiences her. There's a coldness there. And I think that's fascinating. And the... 
Well, you learn a lot about the babies through the way they think a mom is supposed to be because it's different for all of them. They all have a different idea of what a mom does. My last thing is I would compare this episode, I think it's the And She Was Gone of this series, the sort of emotion, not just because they both have to do with poetry, but just that sort of deep familial loss, even if it isn't death and as told by Ginger. Uh, it's just a masterpiece of an episode, and I think it's definitely the best Rugrats episode we watched, even though Home Movies is an excellent, excellent episode. Uh, the show just, it hits every note somehow. I It will have me dying laughing and literally in tears by the end and I don't know how they do it it's a sh- it's a uh frankly not the most advanced animation in the world show uh about literal babies you know and it it hits so many emotional peaks yeah it's it really is a masterpiece and it's it's another one of the shows and I'll agree with you on this one that I appreciate more as I'm older there's so much to look back on and reflect on and understand so many more bits and pieces that just make it so beautiful and uh, i i love this show i really do me that, too and I'm, I'm glad we covered this one and happy mother's day to everybody uh we thought we don't usually do theme episodes anymore but we thought this would be a fitting one for the weekend absolutely and you know i just think i also just one last thing i think it's a good thing for them to have sort of a character that doesn't have a mother on Mother's Day and sort of have them coping with that. Because I think, obviously, a lot of people, that's their lives, right? And I feel like it could have been pretty powerful as a kid without a mother to sort of get this view on Mother's Day instead of the generic, like, look at all of us with our perfect moms and our perfect lives and we're all giving gifts. You know, it, I, I feel like it's a powerful way to to sort of capture this because I'm sure those days are especially hard for those kids. Yeah, I'll bet it is. And, you know, just like the, there's a Thanksgiving episode of uh, Sesame Street where Mr. Hooper dies in the late 80s, I think it aired, and they aired it around Thanksgiving so the kids would be with their families to talk about it and work through it. And I just love when, like, pieces of children's media go there, but in a really delicate and, and smartly handled way. Yeah, it's, it is one of those strong episodes. It's one of those powerful episodes of a show that really stands out. And I think that's, I think that's everything I've got on this one. Well worth watching, especially if you want some Mother's Day feels, go and give it a view for sure. Absolutely. That's all I've got as well. Let's head to that conclusion. All right, guys, on a lighter note now, our Twitter poll is, would you rather have Spike, Angelica, or Lil as a mommy? This is a tough one, I gotta say. Yeah, you're not getting a great situation. Yeah, there's no good answer. <laughs> it's really the lesser of three evils, and I yeah. I honestly, I am unsure as to how people will go. I would be shocked if Angelica won. I'll give Spike it that. Is, I know our listeners, Spike is gonna win. Yeah, you it's know, honestly... The- Spike might not even be the worst choice. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I I would probably rather have, oh, uh, maybe Lil, I don't know. But then Angelica is also the most competent. Uh, there's, there's an argument for all three. There's an argument for all three, for sure. None of them are great, but there's an argument there. Um, all that being said, guys, next week we are going to be discussing the Danny Phantom episode Memory Blank with Allie, the writer. Allie's been a listener for a long time. We've had a few conversations with her and decided that, you know, we'd love to have her on the show. And this is an episode that she picked out. I don't know that I've ever seen it. So I'm excited to to watch it with her. Pressure's on, Allie. It better be good. We always say to people who suggest Danny Phantom episodes, like, all right, but uh, (laughs) no, we don't. We don't hate Danny Phantom, and we're really excited to try it out and to go on the air with you. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. We also got our social media going on, Twitter, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Check all those out. And guys, keep sending us those Avatar name ideas. We're starting to think it doesn't even need a name. It could just be like our Avatar Marathon, because it's still the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast. It's not a new podcast. But 
we are only four episodes away from episode 100. Actually, a bunch of milestones coming up. So May 20th is our two-year anniversary of our first episode of this podcast, which is awesome. I'm going to start an avatar sort of promo uh, on our social media to start getting people excited about what we're going to do. Um, so I can't believe that, Ashley. Uh, congratulations to you and to me, I suppose, that we've kept it going for this long. That's really exciting. Yeah, we've we've come a long way, and I think we've come a long way in the content of the show, too. A lot of things have changed, but I'm pretty proud of us for making it two years, so go Absolutely. us. So that's our first big milestone coming up. The second one will be episode 100, uh, which we have sort of, we have a rough idea of what it's going to be, but we'll announce that later. And then... Uh, podcast 101 is the start of our avatar marathon so lots coming over the next month should be a really good time and with all of that said thanks so much as always guys for listening and we'll see you next week